One of the first architects I interned with in New York, I remember she used to say, it doesn't have to be matching shoes, matching handbag. <laughs> so I, I think that's very true. I'm Christian Zapotka. I'm an architect based in DC, and we're at one of my projects here in Georgetown. Love this house. I call it a, an extra wide Victorian Bayfront row house. Washington was filled with Bayfront brick row houses through the second half of the 19th century. And occasionally there would be a jumbo size where it's just a few feet wider, which makes all the difference in a house. Kelly and Todd said they wanted to have an open kitchen family room, but not in a kind of big, over-the-top, suburban splendor kind of way. They, they wanted it to register as this is the core of their Georgetown house. It's not big, but it's, it's got to be elegant, and it's got to work for them as a family. And so I think it, it works extremely well. I have three favorite details about this kitchen. The color, the sort of sage green, but not quite sage. The unlacquered brass hardware. I don't know why everyone's so afraid of hardware. I like to celebrate it. I think hardware is like jewelry. And we chose these really elegant levers and you know these turned components. And then the other thing that I love is the sink. The main sink is just part of the stone. So the stone just kind of drops into the sink. So it's all one piece. I've worked with Waterworks for many years uh, doing bathrooms and I was thrilled when they started doing kitchens because I knew there'd be great quality, great design. In fact, you know, in a small Georgetown kitchen, it's not like there's miles of cabinetry. So why not make it as good as it can be? I mean, it's really furniture, built-in furniture in the middle of the house. It ought to be special. Corners are always the hardest thing. I mean, this is like the story of architecture. It goes back to Bramante and the corner columns and so on. Especially with cabinetry, it's, it's, it's very difficult to make corners work. Biggest challenge is, is where does the microwave go? Because everyone's, you know, you can get everything right and there's always that lingering thing, where does the microwave go? And in this case, we tucked it into that pesky corner. You're making good use of an otherwise dead corner. Like in old historical houses, the hearth was the center of the house. Everyone would hover around the fireplace to keep warm. Now everyone hovers around that central island. So the island has taken on an enormous importance in kitchens. Again, it's not a big house. It's, it's a row house. By keeping all of the color uniform, it occupies less visual space. When the island is a different material, different color, it really starts to jump out as, as an object. And that can work beautifully in a very big kitchen, or very big space. But in a more compact space, you want it to have a, a more cohesive image, and that's done with color. It's, it's like a, designing a boat. Every bit of it counts. Everything has to have its own function, if not two functions. And that's uh, very important to merge the ideal plan, the, the aesthetic, with the very functional. There's a well-known expression in engineering, which is the three E's, and that's elegance, efficiency, and economy. And elegance, of course, is what we all strive for beauty and perfection in design. Efficiency is also critical, and it's not design unless there's a degree of efficiency, because there's fine art, and we look at and appreciate fine art for what it is. It's an object, it's a painting, whatever it is. It doesn't have to do more than be beautiful, whereas design has to be beautiful and functional. And then finally, economy. That does come with elegance and efficiency. Efficiency allows for economy, because when you're getting the most for what you're using, what you're spending, there's an economy to that. And it's that combination of form and function that is the true sign of good design. Don't hesitate to spend money, whether it's a little or a lot, just spend it well. 
Sure, we all, as architects, artists, we strive to make unique things, original things, but I don't think that you want to sacrifice a timeless, good, well-done design just for the sake of something being unique or unusual, because it's dated by Friday. You want something that will last and always holds the test of time.